Same shirt, same laptop. Six months later, let's get to the review. How has it been one year later after purchasing the Lenovo Legion 5 Pro? Simply said, it has been amazing. This laptop fulfilled pretty much all of the expectations I had for it, but there was one single issue. I will talk about that one later. So let's run over the specs real quick so you don't get bored with all of the numbers and all of this stuff. So my spec for it was a Ryzen 5 5600H, an RTX 3060, 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of SSD storage, which was pretty much the worst spec that I could have chosen because I was prepared to do some video editing, some photo editing, and these files take up a bit of space, so I should have gone with more. And if you're going to buy this laptop, I would suggest that you go at least with one terabyte. And the processor and graphics card did a really great job. They kept up with everything that I threw at them, and especially when rendering really tough video edits and playing hardcore games, which I used to. But unfortunately, I can't give you my much info on the performance in games with this laptop since I don't play video games anymore. But if you would like to check out all of these performance numbers for this laptop, I will leave a link down below in the description for you so you can check out another creator's video who goes over all of the FPS's and all of the temperatures while playing games. Speaking of temperature and dust fans, the fans are really quiet when you're doing some productive work and not really beating the system too much. But if you start going ham on it, like rendering those videos or playing those games and you turn the profile up to the performance level then those fans get quite loud but not too much I think they are like 43 decibels but they filter out all of the hot air and the laptop doesn't get too hot it gets quite hot around the middle of the keyboard but outside of that it's really okay and you can still use it while it's performing at the highest level then one downfall that I mentioned at the beginning of this video about this laptop is that when you're plugged into the wall it works extremely well. Everything is fluid, everything is nice, everything works like it should. But if you're not plugged in, the laptop just sometimes just lags. I don't know why, but sometimes when you're just watching YouTube videos and you're doing something a little bit more intensive, then it kind of lags in the middle of basic processes like opening up windows and stuff like that. But it's still really usable and this happens like once every like three to five minutes. But I still prefer when, for example, watching those YouTube videos, I don't want to interruptions so I'm plugging it into the wall every time pretty much. So to make up for this little detriment you have an amazing screen. So let me tell you the specs of this screen. It's 2560 by 1600 which makes it a 2k panel with a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. This IPS panel has 165 hertz, 100% sRGB coverage, HDR and it's 500 nits which makes it really amazing because you can see the screen all the time when you're inside. Outside is a bit of a struggle and the direct sunlight but if you're in a shade it's completely usable and the screen really makes this laptop what it is. It's seriously the best part of this laptop and I've been enjoying every single second that I look at it but with like everything great in life this comes with a little downside which is the battery life. It's pretty good for a gaming laptop, but it could be better. When you turn all of the settings that I mentioned to maximum, you get around four to five hours of battery life. But if you turn those settings down to 60 Hertz, around 300 nits, and turn the resolution down to 1080, then you're getting probably around seven to even eight hours of battery life. And also to boost your battery life a little longer, don't forget to turn on hybrid mode, because this really helps and just puts the GPU basically to sleep and only uses the internal graphics card of the CPU. As far as the ports go, on the left side you can find a USB-C connector and a headphone jack. On the right side you can find a USB-A and a little switch for your camera, which is by the way 720p, and you can turn this camera on and off manually so no one can spy on you. On the back side you have an Ethernet port, a USB-C power delivery port, three USB-A ports with one being a power delivery port, an HDMI port and your power delivery port and a single little LED to let you know if you're charging the laptop. So those were all of the specs and now let's get to the basic things that I discovered over time. So in the last review I mentioned that I had problems with the trackpad getting stuck, but this is no longer the case. The trackpad has been truly excellent ever since and as we were talking about the temperature of the laptop I forgot to mention that there's a switch between different profiles of the laptop itself, which means you can go from silent to balanced to power and your current profile is indicated by 
by the color of the LED on your power button. And you can switch between these profiles using FN plus Q. And I found myself most of the time being on a silent mode since I'm not doing any really intensive work. But when I'm rendering a video or doing something really, really intensive, then I switch it to the power mode, which is basically the red LED, and then it cranks up the fans to the max and you have a bunch of noise like I talk about, but it's totally worth for the power you get. Okay, so this is gonna be it for today. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and this helped you with your buying decision. If you would ask me uh, what I thought if I would buy this again, I for sure would, just because of the screen alone. So if you have any more questions, leave them down in the comments below and I will for sure answer you. Till then, I will see you next time. Bye-bye.